In the previous tutorials, we've discussed identifying SQL injection vulnerabilities. In this tutorial, we'll discuss fixing SQL injection issues. We will demonstrate creating a parameterized query, as well as changing the method to use a save query written elsewhere in the code base. Firstly, we just want to state that we do not recommend creating your SQL queries inside of a controller function. However, we will demonstrate changing the concatenated SQL query inside of this controller to that of a parameterized query, and to do so, we'll keep this logic inside the controller. The first thing we'll do is remove the ID part here and add a user ID placeholder. We chose user ID, but it could be really any name that makes sense to you with the colon symbol prepended. Next, we'll need to assign a value to the user ID parameter provided to the SQL query. This safely separates the query from the user supplied input. User input can no longer interfere with the existing SQL query as it is neither concatenated nor interpolated into the SQL query string. We have successfully changed our dangerous SQL injectable query from a concatenated query to a parameterized query. To confirm that our fix does in fact work, we'll navigate from the dashboard back to received payments and enter a SQL control character. Note that while we do receive an error, it is not an error related to SQL injection. We have safely parameterized this query and prevented SQL injection. In this next example, we would like to use the method shown here in payment repository called bind payments by receiver. There are three reasons we want to call this particular function. Firstly, it performs the query we need. Secondly, it does this outside of the controller. And thirdly, it performs a safe or parameterized SQL query, which we discussed during the identification tutorial. Navigate back to the controller, import the payment repository. We'll need to define the payment repository as an object that we can call so we'll make an auto wired statement. Finally, we need to remove our existing SQL statement. We'll remove the call to get result list and enter in a new call to the find by receiver function within payment repository. Of course, we'll need to pass in a valid user object, so we'll parse the ID string and then pass this over to the user service to grab a user object. We should be all set Let's go ahead and take a look at our changes on the site at runtime. We'll navigate to the payments received page and enter a malicious SQL control character. As expected, we do receive an error regarding the parsing of the string, but not an error related to SQL injection. In this tutorial, we demonstrated two separate ways to mitigate this flaw, but ultimately the concept is the same. Do not string interpolate or concatenate data and instead use parameterized queries. This concludes your tutorial on mitigating SQL injection within a Java application.